Hi, everyone. Welcome to the How We Hustle podcast. I'm Mike. And I'm Tanya. And we invite you to join us in our unfiltered conversation about the real life hustle of being an entrepreneur. For more information about the podcast, check out howwehustlepodcast.com. Make sure to follow us on Instagram at How We Hustle Podcast, where you'll get notable quotes from our episodes and updates on live new episodes. So head over to Instagram and follow us at How We Hustle Podcast. So I want to tell you guys about a challenge. I am uh, challenging myself on the podcast because it will hold me accountable. I have not really been... uh, I've been trying to grow my business, kind of just using Facebook ads and not really get myself out there. And I know that I am leaving a lot of opportunity on the table by doing that. So I want to challenge myself to be more active on Instagram, specifically on IGTV. So I'm going to challenge myself on the podcast in front of everyone to do one post on IGTV every single day from now until Christmas. How's that? Tanya? That's huge. That's a, that's a big challenge. Like I'll be watching, but I mean, I don't think I could do that. <laughs> I think it's a great idea. I don't think I could do that, but I have too many perfectionism issues to do that. And I'm very long winded, but I try to post on IGTV like once a week. So I'd be really interested to see, you know, now until Christmas. I mean, I think it can only do good things for your business, like more visibility, more. So you don't think that posting on every uh, every day is like a detriment to what I'm trying to accomplish, which is more, more like eyeballs. I'm really trying to challenge myself to see what will happen if I do get, you know, push myself into directions into places that I I'm kind of uncomfortable with, you know what I mean? It's like, it's, it's the usual syndrome of putting yourself out there is uncomfortable, but I, that, you know, I kind of go through these stages up and down where I do it and I don't. And it's like, obviously it gets easier every day, you know, when you're doing it regularly, but then, you know, the summer, I uh, just kind of didn't do it and, and I'm, you know, doing it again, challenging myself. So do you think it's a detriment or no? Like not posting on social media every day is a detriment. I don't. No, think... I was gonna say like doing it every single. Is it? Is it? Is it? Is there too much? You know what I mean. I don't think that there could be too much. Like personally, I think that getting in front of people every day is can only do good things for your business. I think that being visible can only do good things for your business. It's more so for me. Like I don't want my life to look like that. Like I don't want social media to run my life. I, and so like for me, I don't think I could do it, but I mean, for you, I mean, I probably could do it. I just don't know if it's aligned with how I want to spend my time right now, but I think that it can only do good things for your business. Like if you, if that's something you want to commit to, if that's like a challenge that you want to give yourself, like, I only think it can do good for your business. So if you don't want your social media to run your life as an example, what, you know, what, what do you use instead? Well, I just like don't put the pressure on myself to post every single day because like, you know, I'd rather spend time in calls with clients. I'd rather spend time connecting with people. And also like freedom is a really important piece of it for me. Like if I'm working all day, every day, that doesn't really give me the freedom that I built this business to have. So I feel like it's also important for me to like take time to enjoy life. And like, I also don't think that my social media should like, you know, I I don't post on Instagram stories every day. Like I don't post on Instagram every day because like, I think it's also important for me to take time away from social media, to take time to like be present in my current life and like to spend time with like my friends and family to focus on my current clients, to like build things for them. And you know, to to connect with people. So I just try not to post every single day and be super... Because if I go on Instagram to post, like I will be on there for a while. But if you're looking to drum up some clients, let's get like, you know, I'm not doing this because I, you know, I'm obviously trying to achieve an objective, right? So it, you know, it is a good... I I don't want to make it sound like it's... tool. Yeah. It's like the best tool that we have. Social media, especially IGTV right now, is like the best tool that we have to connect with new people. What have been your uh, experiences with IGTV? Oh my God, it's only been amazing. Like 
IGTV, I think is like a gift that we've been given. And like, I'm all about repurposing content. So if I do a live video, like I'll edit pieces of that live video and put it onto IGTV. And the reach is just because Instagram wants, Instagram wants IGTV to grow and for people to spend more time on their platform that they are showing IGTV videos to more people. So where you may have seen a lower reach on your posts, you can make up for that in using IGTV. It's almost like IGTV is, I'm not going to say the new YouTube, but it's really, they're developing a, you know, a database that is going to be there for a long time. So I, I do feel like we're in the early days of IGTV and they can't really go anywhere. So putting, that's why I want to really get my stuff sort of indexed on there because I've been looking at some other people's, uh, I haven't looked at your videos, Tanya, but you know, thousands and thousands of views can rack up, right? Mm-hmm. And that's incredible, especially if you, you know, link that video into a funnel, right? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, uh, like pretty... at the moment, you can't necessarily link it with like data on. But you can, or... you can put a link in the description that will go into a uh, a funnel. Not a clickable link, though. I believe it is. They say that, but it doesn't actually work. Okay. Well, I've tried it. But have it to look into that. Work. But yeah, like, I mean, maybe they say that. I've tried it. They haven't actually worked to put in the link. But you can certainly say like the link is in my bio or the link is in my profile. And you can also use it in your IG stories. It's like you can say anyone, even if you don't have 10,000 followers, you can use it as a swipe up. So like it allows you to start using the swipe up and linking your video in your IG stories which also helps the reach. It also goes on your profile. You can also embed it into a, into a blog. You can like repurpose all that content. Yeah. So I'm challenging myself to do that and I will do my first one today. Oh, amazing. So uh, that's pretty exciting. Yeah. And like, even like you could use the content to make a podcast episode. Like there's so many things you can do with the video. Yes. Awesome. So, What are some other ways like, you know, that you would recommend to me, Tanya, other than... So I think like with IGTV, it's also important. I think like the like interaction, it's really a good way to like start conversations with people. And I've been finding it's been amazing just like using DMs, using voice notes with people on Instagram has like blew up the amount of interaction and the amount of like calls I've had and new clients like... People are using the DMs to ask for help, to ask to get on calls with me. And that has been instrumental in me getting podcast interviews and clients. So that's really what I've been focused on is more the connections with people. And if that starts with an IGTV, amazing. If that starts with like a post, amazing. Like, But focusing on how I can connect with those people personally. And a lot of my clients have been seeing a really big, and me too, um, focus on doing like voice notes to people because it's so much more personal than just sending a message. So, you know, if, if somebody is liking or commenting on your IGTV video, then you can voice note them and like keep that conversation going. Well, what you're saying is actually uh, interesting. And it's sort of what I've realized and has precipitated me wanting to do this is for the last number of months, if not more than probably more, actually, let's be honest, for the last 10 years, I have been uh, trying to automate everything as much as possible, literally. And that's just like on a, on a big picture. But what you're talking about is getting personal and just like doing the work. You know what I mean? It's like getting in those conversations, being willing to, you know, connect with people and it's easy to avoid that. Just be like, you know, I'll just run Facebook ads to a webinar, to a checkout button and just, you know, but, but for treating me, it like, like, you know, like connecting with people, it's, it's a different mindset. Yeah. Like that's my mindset, I guess, because like I didn't get into this business to be a marketer. I didn't get into this business to like know a lot of tech. Like that is something that has come easily to me along the way. But like, really, that's not why I wanted to have a business. That's not why I wanted to be a coach. Like I wanted to be a coach because I wanted to work with people and help people. And so 
when I automate everything, when I offered my, like offered a self-study program, I actually hated my business. And like, I don't, like, I know that I don't enjoy my business if I'm not speaking to real people. Like I start to question, like, if I'm actually good at this and who would ever choose me and like, why me? And like, am I good enough? And all this kind of bullshit that comes up. Sorry if I swore. Whoops. Um, oh no, now we have to. Sorry about the E. Oh, well, you're going to have to deal with it this time. Um, but yeah, I try hard, but it's been a while. Um, but basically, I think that like I really got into this business to like connect with real people. And I think that using social media and IGTV and IG stories to like access or reach new people who need my help and that, you know, that I want to connect with that's really what I use it for. Because when I automate everything, I hate it. And when I, I obviously have some automation and I know how to set up automation and I help people every day set that up. But for me, the the fulfillment and the purpose and the joy comes from the real people, like connecting with real people, talking to real people, hearing people's stories, like getting on the phone with people, like actually helping them personally. Like that's where I enjoy my business the most. And I mean, voice notes, <laughs> I use it with my clients on Boxer. Like I love voice noting people because it's so much faster. I hate texting. I hate typing. I hate writing. You like writing, Mike, but I hate writing. And well, so like, Mr. Ham, so okay, I hate writing everything. And so like, if I can just like click a button and be walking down the street or like, even <laughs> I don't do it when I'm driving, but you could be like, you know, it doesn't matter where you are. You can just like quickly voice note someone. And I think it makes such a difference when you can hear someone's voice and when you can connect with them, which is probably why video does so well is because when people can hear and see you, instead of just reading something that you wrote, it's so much more powerful. So like a video is going to be more powerful than a post of like your face and a bunch of content. Um, but taking that a step further and actually connecting with people personally over voice note, it goes a long way for people. To, to know that you took the time to voice note them and it's not even like your assistant replying to them or someone like that. Like I think, and it's not like an automated response. Like I think that goes a long way because like that doesn't make me feel cared about or seen or heard or like I'm important if somebody just automates all the messages to me. Yeah. That's actually why I want to like challenge myself to do IGTV because I'm actually craving like uh, more, more interaction. I've just been kind of, it's easy to set up your, you know, set up your sales funnel and then, you know, wake up every day and watch your ads and kind of do that. But that's like, that's me hiding when I, when I'm doing that, I'm hiding and I'm not having conversations with people. And, you know, it's, so that's why I want to do it. All the reasons that you've just sort of said is, is why I am excited. Yeah. Like I think video only does good things. Like, and I also think even at the beginning, it's important to remember that it's not about like the masses and the thousands of people that could view your video. It's more about like just the one person. If yeah. one person gets, gets something out of watching your video, like then it was a good video and not every video is going to be amazing. Some videos are like, ugh, cringeworthy. But I think the important part is like showing up and like not giving up and not hiding because it's super easy to hide behind a computer or a phone screen nowadays. But like I always remember my one client and you know who I'm talking about, Mike, um, that came to me a couple of years ago and said that she had been looking for a business coach for four years. And like, I was so concerned about me and myself and like, Oh, am I good enough? Like why me? And like, am I experienced enough? Can I charge this? Like, who's going to choose me? Where are they going to come from? And all along this client had been looking for her perfect business coach for four years like imagine where she could have been if I hadn't been hiding for so long. So I always think about that now. Like, you know, it's not about you necessarily. It's about the people who need your help and that you have something that could help someone. And the more you hide, the longer it will be for someone who's like sitting in struggle right now. Like someone else is struggling and you have the thing that's going to help them get out of that situation but you're so concerned about like, what do I look like? And how did I sound? And did I say that right? Or did I make a mistake? Or like, is it perfect? Because you know, I have perfectionism issues, recovering perfectionists over here. So like, that's 
like I have to remind myself that it's not about that. It's about the person who's struggling. It's about the person that you can help that you have something that could help someone and hiding is doing them a disservice. Yeah. It's always like, if you find yourself, it's what I do anyway. It's like, it's not about me. Like, you know what I mean? In whatever you do, if you're making like copywriting or, or anything really, don't think about it in terms of you think about it in terms of your clients. Like you're doing it for them so that they can find. Cause if you think about it in terms of yourself, it's easy to be like, Oh, I'm not good enough. Oh, I don't have this or whatever, but just focus it on talking or, or doing whatever that's client centric and like talking yeah. about them. Cause then it takes the pressure off of you and you can just talk about what you know about and talk about helping other people. And it just sort of works, you know, like what, how, How can you be of service today is really the key. And we always feel, I've noticed this lately, we always question if we are good enough when we're not doing the thing. Like if you're really good at writing and you're not writing, then you're you're gonna forget how good you are at it. If you're a really good coach and you haven't been coaching people, you're gonna forget how good you are at it because you haven't been doing the thing that you're really great at. So whenever you question, am I actually cut out for this, get back into service. Like how can you serve powerfully? So if Mike, this means like serving by being visible and sharing what you have to give the valuable content that you have and showing up and sharing it every single day. then so like, that's only in service of other people. And you'll remember how good you are at this and how many people actually really need this. And as we discussed a little bit earlier, like how many people don't know what that F they're doing? Because there are tons and tons and tons of people that don't know what they're doing. And why? Because nobody came out of the womb as a marketer. Like I didn't get into coaching to learn how to be a marketer. But if you're in the business, if you're in it, if you have a business, you are a marketer. You have to market your business, whether you like it or not. You have to sell whether you like it or not. And like, so yeah, no one taught us how to sell. If you don't, if you've never done it before, you've never done it successfully, you're not going to know how to do it. If you've never used these platforms before, you're not going to know how to do it. And so it's not your fault that you don't know how to do it. There's nothing wrong with you that you don't know how to do it. It has nothing to do with the service that you offer. But it just means like we have to get to the point where we're ready to ask for help because this is the piece of the puzzle that's going to help you actually get there. And like no one knows what they're doing. Like I didn't know what I was doing before I hired people to help me. Yeah. There are so many people in the world. Like just go outside and look like, or go on the highway anyway. Like there are so many people that are, it just means your pool is, and I have to remind myself all the time, but it's like, you know, especially when you do sign like a client, it's just, it really blows your mind. Cause you're like, wow, I, I found this person and I didn't know them before. And now they're my client. Like how many more people are there out there? And the answer is there are tons. infinite almost. Yeah, and 7.5 billion people in this world. Like, there's you kind of get your head around this idea that, like, if one person can find you, it means that a hundred people can find you, and if a hundred people can find you, et cetera. And it's just when you really realize that, it's kind of mind blowing, and yeah, it just I think it's, good, it's a good thing to remind yourself of too. Yeah, there are tons of people, and like, I was watching Jimmy Fallon a couple of days ago with that whole um, Halloween candy hilarious thing that he does. Um, where like the parents ate the candy and he was saying, as long as people are having children, like I will be running this hilarious video. Like there will always be younger kids that have not seen this video on YouTube that we can like do this trick to is the same thing with like, as long as there are people who are starting a business, which to be honest, like it's endless, like people are always starting new businesses. People are always innovating. People are always deciding to become a business owner there are always going to be people in the world that don't know how to get that message out to the world. So there's always going to be people who need your services. Like, and like, as long as like, it, it doesn't matter. Like as, as long as people are living, people are going to need help with their health. As long as people are living, they're going to need help with their business. As long as people are living, they're going to need help with their relationships. Like these are problems that don't just like disappear overnight. People are not going to know how to do these things. And so Every day there's new people that are getting into business that need your help. Every day that there are people who are starting a new business or changing a new business or getting into the online space where they were in the offline space. All right. 
So should we wrap it there? Maybe follow me, follow you on Instagram if you're not already. Follow me at michael.linkedin. I'm at wholehearted business coach. Yeah, come follow both of us and see you on the next episode. And that's a wrap on another episode of How We Hustle. For more information, check out howwehustlepodcast.com.